Get in there, everybody. I am very pleased to tell you that this week's thrilling installment of Monday Night Raw was better than last week's installment of Monday Night Raw. Get in there. Celebrate, everybody. The run, the terrible run of terrible, terrible Raws. It's over. It's not, though, is it? Because Raw is still f- terrible. I've just made myself a list here of things that I saw on last night's Raw that I didn't like and contributed to last night's Raw being a really bad episode of Monday Night Raw but better than last week's so we better take all we can. We saw matches happening and then happening some more even though you didn't want to see the matches happening to begin with. Hmm, Riddle is still being a really annoying dick. WWE man, you've got that scale, the high weed man scale going all the way down to the feckin' idiot scale. He's right here at the moment, bring him back to sort of this part there and everything will be fine. Then we see the makeup department going on strike halfway through doing Randy Orton's makeup for goodness sake. Then we have Alexa Bliss. Bless Alexa Bliss. She is doing the best she can with the other bollocks she is given. But I don't know what it is, what they have her doing. It's just not landing with me. It's spooky all right, but it's a sort of naff sort of spooky. The sort of like, oh my God, what you doing kind of spooky. Nothing against her, of course. It's just the bollocks she's been given. And then we have Nia Jax hurting people once again. Nia, nothing against you, but it does just seem to happen more often than every single other WWE superstar in the history of the company, doesn't it? And then finally, in terms of things I thought were weird from last night's Raw, we find ourselves in a position where AJ Styles is the gateway to the Royal Rumble. It's happened three times now. Drew Gulak had to go through AJ Styles to get to the Royal Rumble. Trevor Ricochet had to go through AJ Styles to get to the Royal Rumble, then last night on Raw, I don't know why I'm pointing up there, there's nothing there. Last night on Raw, Ron the Truth Killings, that's his name these days, isn't it? He had to go through AJ Styles to get to the Royal Rumble. How did AJ Styles become the master of the Royal Rumble? I have no idea. But for the good thing, I need to balance this out, everybody. Edge cutting one hell of a promo and also announcing himself to be a part of Sunday's men's Royal Rumble match. It's a good thing and not a bad thing. And let me tell you why. The cat is among the pigeons. This is going to be a different edge to the one who returned at last year's Royal Rumble match. He is goal orientated. He wants a title back that he never actually lost. He is ready. He is loaded. He is locked. He is stocked. And he's ready to blot all over the Royal Rumble of 2021. That promo last night, that got me hyped to see Edge go in there and just kick some arse, you know what I mean? I'm all for it. Well done, WWE. That was some good business done on last night's Raw. At least there was something. But hey ho, let's stop this rambling intro. I am Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic Wrestling and welcome to all the WTF moments from another sh- I need to stop swearing. Another bad episode of Monday Night Raw. Hit the intro, intro man. Melina? So then Miz and John Morrison come sauntering down the ramp and they talk about big beefy matchups between big beefy things. We have Godzilla against the giant gorilla. We have Big Baldy Bill against Big Daddy Drew. And in these matchups between these big massive things, there are consequences. And those consequences are that right at the end of these big beefy matchups, somebody might get injured. And I was thinking, hang on there, lads. The end of these big beefy matchups, one of these involving, of course, Big Baldy Bill, the end of the matchup results in the injury not with Bill's matches, it happens before he even does his entrance. We all know what he does, don't we everybody? This big silly goose, he starts trying to kiss all the doors, no not with his tongue everybody, the Glaswegian way ha hoo! Just like that. Now, normally here on these WTF moments, I'd be making these kinds of matchups being given away on a weekly television show, a huge WTF moment. But after the whole Peacock thing yesterday, it became abundantly clear if it wasn't already that WWE, it's not about putting on the good and logical things anymore. It's just about churning out all the content they can possibly churn out before selling it to other companies to make massive profits. And it's just a sad WTF moment I have to make, but a WTF moment I have to make just to let you all know not to expect any more good Monday Night Raws forevermore. It's gonna be terrible. And then I started thinking about former WWE superstar and prime twitcher 
page because Charlotte, what are you saying? And that's because Charlotte was stood there speaking about Shayna Baszler before she took on Shayna Baszler inside the wrestling ring on last night's Raw. And she was saying, hey, Shayna, I think you should bring your imaginary crown to this fight because I'm an actual queen or something like that. Charlotte is not me. But when she said that, I was thinking, Charlotte, you never wear a crown yourself, do you? Apart from the odd WrestleMania special entrance, of course. Big, baldy bastard Baron Corbin, he wears his crown every single week, and he looks like a massive tit each and every time he does. But yours... Yours is imaginary too, just like Shayna's. Two weeks in a row now and we have Charlotte Flair cutting what are Healy Healy professional wrestling heel promos, all while she's in the midst of a feud where she is the clear baby face, and Lacey Evans, she's the heel. What's going on with Charlotte? And then Charlotte Flair said, that's why they call me Miss WrestleMania. And I was thinking, who? Who calls you Miss WrestleMania, Charlotte? What are you talking about, man? And to answer that question, I, of course, took my sorry ass over to the Google machine and I typed in Miss WrestleMania. And who came up? Miss WrestleMania. That's Miss WrestleMania, Charlotte. Not you, you silly goose. What's going on with you, Charlotte, man? You're just talking bollocks each and every week. Stop making it up, man. Stick to the script. <laughs> and then Charlotte Flair started speaking about the Lacey Evans situation and the bollocks it kept her flowing. And that's because Charlotte said, hey, Charlie Caruso, I know the intentions of Lacey Evans, but let me tell you, it's one thing to have the last name Flair, but it's another thing to carry the last name Flair. I'm good. And with that quote there from Charlotte, what is she saying once again? We've got to ask this question. It would appear the days of Lacey Evans simply using Ric Flair to get inside the head of Charlotte, they're long gone. And that's because in Charlotte's mind, and let's face it, if it's in Charlotte's mind, it must be right. It must be canon in WWE. It's Charlotte Flair. She's always right. She's great. She's Miss WrestleMania. She's always done things right, and all the other lies she said in her promos over the past couple of weeks. But in Charlotte's mind, Lacey Evans is just in love with her married man. She's going to disregard her lovely, lovely, lovely family at home, and then break up the marriage of Ric Flair, just so she can then get married to Ric Flair. Ah, oh, what a lovely story. So a singles match starts and a singles match ends in DQ. Then an impromptu tag team match starts and that impromptu tag team match, it ends via count out. A count out, of course, that makes Shayna Baszler, who should never, ever look anything like silly whatsoever. It made her look very, very silly indeed. Then this impromptu tag team match, which was already over, we went to commercial break, we come back and Adam Pearce is on the ramp being showered at by all of the competitors inside that tag team match and that impromptu tag team match even though it finished it started again but hey ho on friday adam pierce was called a puss by roman reigns and i guess in that moment there he was just proven roman right wasn't he always remember everybody wwe is now just creating content for creating content sick and also raking in lots of money while doing so no matter how good no matter how bad as long as there's content that's wwe never forget it from here on out it's sad but i must say in the midst of this wtf moment there is a report on the interweb from pw Insider, who are always reliable by the way, they're one of the good ones. Apparently Shayna wasn't supposed to be counted out, but she legitimately was, because as we all know the referees in the matches, they have to count certain things as if they're real. And Shayna, she just didn't get back in the ring in time, so I guess that, that third match from the original first match... That wasn't WWE's fault. But there we have the submission magician. Knows all of the bones, all of the muscles inside the human body. Knows which way to bend all of those bones and muscles to the most devastating effect. She's, she's very clever, clearly. But she can't count to ten. Weird times we live in. Weird times. <laughs> Riddle! Get some new gear, man. I swear down, I don't think I've seen that purple number on Monday Night Raw since he lost his first name. So if that is brand new gear and he's put the M on there... It doesn't really matter, but still I'm going to bring it up. Well, it looks like we've got a new catchphrase in WWE, and I don't know what it was when I saw Shelton Benjamin say it, but I thought, hey-ho, we have the modern-day equivalent of Ron Simmons' dam. Because on last night's Raw, we saw Shelton Benjamin come out on the ramp. He had clearly forgotten to take his mask off. He realised he had forgotten to take his mask off. When the camera was filming him right in his face, he takes it off, and you can see him say, shh. And then somebody spanked me. I thought he was dead. I didn't actually. Just been missing for a long time, hasn't he? Uh. <laughs> but it's Tucky. He's alive. And WWE has still not given that man new gear. Why is he still looking like that man, WWE? Give him a chance, man. Give him something cool. Why? Why would you make your own superstars look as bad as that? Oh. 
Oh. The things you don't expect to see on Monday Night Raw. And that is clearly, that's clearly one of them, that. Gimmick infringement Kane, who was just here, by the way, he's let me know that that there on last night's Raw looks eerily similar to something we saw on Monday Night Raw well, on SmackDown, wasn't it? A couple of decades ago, but that's besides the point. That's besides the point, gimmick infringement Kane. If you look past what's going on there between Lacey Evans and Ric Flair and look at the background scenery, I just find it really interesting that when the big dog himself, the number one table salesman in all of North America, Roman Reigns, when he's not at work, Lacey Evans and Ric Flair, they get his room. And at this time, Roman Reigns, I know you're watching. How you doing, pal? I'm your number one fan. When you go to work on Friday, check the chairs, man. They might be a bit sticky. Oh. <laughs> and then we learned that AJ Styles has a 12 and 2 record since returning to Monday Night Raw. This stat, of course, it came straight from the lips. The not chapped lips. I wish I had not chapped lips. Uh, they, they are chapped. It's very cold here and I can barely talk. It's so distracting. But it came from the mouth of Tom Phillips. Tom Phillips on commentary. This time he wasn't face falling to Kate in the poo out of line on commentary. He was making sweet love to it. Passionate, tender love. And that's on two levels, of course. The first one being, when the hell has win-loss records ever been a thing in WWE in the modern day ever? And second, of course, dear viewer, the fact that 12 and 2, that doesn't quite add up on either side evenly, does it? It's not 50-50 booking. AJ Styles booking the trend in WWE today. That's a bloody big thing. Forget about the little things. It's massive. And then in terms of WTF moments, it was very slim pickings until we fast forward all the way through to the end of the main event match. We've seen some spooky bollocks from Alexa Bliss once again, but I guess now that's just her character, isn't it? Not WTF moments. That's just her character on Monday Night Raw. Apart from the part where she turned into a four horsewoman, Ross. I guess you're right, gimmick infringement, Kane. Well done for pointing that out. But then Randy Orton came back and did he have his male mascara mask on? That's easy for me to say. Did he, bollocks? He came back looking like I do when I go anywhere that's got a temperature higher than 20 degrees Celsius. It just made the WTF moment I made on last week's Raw WTF moments a bigger WTF moment. I tell you, Randy, stay indoors, but at after sun, you're fine. Ooh, I'm Randy Orton and I'm burnt, I'm crying. Get a grip, man, Randy. You killed a man with fire. But not only that, Randall Keith Orton, he came back and he hit an RKO on Alexa Bliss. That's a WTF moment. I guess it's, I guess in, within context, of course, it's not much of a WTF moment. She shot him in the face with fire, for goodness sake. But still, seeing Randy Orton do that, it made me go, whoo. <laughs> Just like that, on, on my own in the office. I swear I'm not losing it. I swear, I'm all right. And then just with the, the sentiments that I've been saying all the way through this video where it's all about WWE and it's all about the content, no matter how good, no matter how bad, no matter how stupid, and WWE, we saw an announcement after last night's Raw which you can respectfully shove right up your arsehole. That sort of stuff there, it needs to get in the bin. The days where you know we had big stakes matches with the number 30 spot in the men's or the women's, whatever, in the rumbles, on the line, that is fair enough. But this kind of thing where we see just these kinds of shows and that kind of big moment just blotted out somebody's mouth, taking a massive moment away from each and every Rumble match, a load of bollocks, I tell you. But that's it for your WTF moments from this week's Raw is crap. I've been Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic Wrestling, chapped lips and really tired body and all. That Royal Rumble stream has completely buggered me, poof. Thank you all for watching, thank you all for donating, all that good stuff. Myself, Owen and Adam, we made it through and we came out better human beings on the other side. Yes, we did. Thank you for watching this video as well. I'll see you next time.